Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. Sean Foyt here, and today is the day I've been looking forward to for a long time. I have my most favorite person in the whole wide world. My wife is here with us today, and we want to talk about education. It's back to school. Our kids just went back to school a couple days ago, and I was just thinking, you know, we would love to share our heart on the things that we've learned along this journey. Of course, it's a crazy season right now, not just with COVID and all that stuff in school, but just with the indoctrination mm -hmm. that is happening yeah. in within education. And, you know, we have four kids and we, I mean, even more, the older we get, the more our dreams begin to grow for our children and the more protective we are about what is being imparted to them and imprinted on their minds in school. Now, I want to say this, and then Kate's going to talk most of this podcast because she's going to have the best things to say. But one of the entire reasons why we did the race, the run for Congress, which why don't you just tell everybody that you made sure that I did. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was convincing you. That's yes, sure. she was convincing me more like I'm more so begging, pushing me over yeah. the edge. But um, one of the main reasons was the attack on family. And so we had this verse that people had prayed over us and prophesied over us, uh, Malachi 4, which is a verse I love, that you know, he'll turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children. And it's talking about the healing of the land comes down to the healing of family. And I think if you look at all of the ills of society, they can, they can, they can be traced back to the breakdown of the family. You know, the, and, and this is why so many groups out there are attacking the nuclear yeah, family. Right. Because it's the backbone of our society. Um, and as Christians, it's, it's everything to us. So that's one of the main reasons why I even ran for Congress was here in California, the intense at attack on family. And that translated even more into this movement, Hold the Line, is something that we wanted to bring over from the congressional run. And we're just passionate about this as parents so yeah and I feel like specifically because you saw behind the veil yeah right so even before 2020 I feel like so much was hidden people didn't even know who their governor was right they didn't know anything about their state's government or the laws that are being passed or how the laws that they're passing without their knowledge affect their daily life and affect their children and I think that you really getting behind seeing behind the veil just made it the urgency like to do something like this, yeah. to bring awareness, to help give courage to people to stand up, to give yeah. language, to give understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, and really even when I was studying in my campaign, I remember I would, we would sit in bed at night and I would be looking through these sheets on everything from yeah. agriculture to the homelessness crisis, you know, really a deep education. Dive. And then in education was right. where I was like, oh my gosh, like. Right. They're trying to pass bills in California to have children chant to Aztec gods. Like, this sounds so crazy and, like, out in left field. This right. sounds so psycho, but it's actually real. It's real like, legislation. It's real right. legislation. It's real bills that they're passing in the dark of night that people don't know about. And so you're right. I mean, that's what really awakened us, I guess. And to I think that, I mean, you're, like, one of the most hopeful people I've ever met. And you started feeling really discouraged for the future of America. Yeah. You know, and so we're going to keep taking a stand. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, babe. Uh, so why don't you walk them through a little bit of our journey of what happened when everything shut down. Of course, we're doing lettuce worship. Things are going crazy. And for the first time in our life, we decided to homeschool. Right. Oh, I, I had always said never in a million years would I ever homeschool. <laughs> Full disclosure, like, she has said that multiple I was times. Very, I mean, anyone who homeschools that knew me prior to this past year would, were just laughing when they found out that I was homeschooling. Mainly just because I'm super laid back. My personality is very laid back and it was just daunting to me. Um, how in the world would I educate four people and keep up our house and keep up with you? <laughs> You're crazy um, in our wild schedule, but I think that was the most beautiful thing that came out of 2020. And yeah. if they're like to encourage any parents that are even contemplating homeschooling, it's it's not daunting. Like yeah. it's totally doable. We had the most enjoyable year 
I mean, there were moments of tears, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> for sure. And it's a lot of work. It really is a lot of work, but yeah. it's beautiful. And it was just such a, I kept coming to this place of being reminded about like how important discipling my children is. Yeah. You know, yeah. like when you read the Bible and it says, go make disciples, like people are like, I'm going to go to the nations. I'm going to go to the furthest place on earth. And it's like, here we have four beautiful souls in front of us. And I think it's like our greatest mandate to raise these disciples, Yeah, come you know? On. And so it was really, <laughs> it was so amazing. And honestly, we have very social children. And I thought that when we told our daughter that we were thinking about homeschooling, she would just be devastated. Um, but they were really excited yeah. and we were able to take them on adventures and just learn so much through life. And don't worry, we did curriculum as well. Um, <laughs> And Kate actually has a double education degree from the University of Texas, so which I think is amazing. And I was still it still felt daunting to yeah. educate my own children at home. <laughs> I don't know how, but it really did. Well, it, <laughs> when you finished your yeah. degree, I remember you were like, I know enough to yeah. where I actually don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to teach. <laughs> you don't want to teach our kids. Our kids, yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, so... So that year, basically, we made that decision. And for me, it, it really came down to, it wasn't as much flexibility. I mean, yeah. that's a huge part of it that's amazing, right? The flexibility yeah. to do school anywhere. But I think for me, it was like, I don't want them to be in an environment here in California yeah. where somebody gets a sneeze and all of a sudden their class is locked down for two weeks. And they're, you know, and things kept getting canceled. Yeah. Soccer was canceled. Basketball was canceled. Like recitals were canceled. Their Everything were was canceled. their parties were canceled. Hugs just, were canceled. Hugs were canceled. Yeah. And it was just like a bummer. Like it was just every every day was depressing. It was a bummer. And we're like, we have the opportunity to change the narrative, which is which is the language we were using across America, right? We want God's narrative in this season. But also for our kids, we were able to change the narrative of that season. You know, they look back on 2020, yeah. they don't remember a pandemic. Or fear. Or, or fear. Or not being able to touch people or being all, you know, and, and, and all across America. I mean, guys, we have people, we have kids on Zoom classes that are blowing their brains out live on Zoom class. Like the level of depression, anxiety, heaviness that's, that's happened because of the school closures. I don't even want to go into that right now. I could rant a lot right. on these teachers unions and how criminal things have gotten in these states. Um, but for us personally, it was more about being able to curate to them an adventure. Yeah. You know, something they wouldn't forget. Yeah. And I think out of that experience, it just really opened our eyes to the fact that we need to be intentional with raising disciples, like I was saying. Like, we absolutely need to be intentional. I think the days of just hoping our kids will learn everything they need to learn about God and the Bible and life and theology, that they'll learn it up at Sunday school. I think those days are over. Yeah. You know, I was thinking earlier today, like, I just saw a picture of Goliath and just really felt like the culture today and like what our kids are being taught through media and social social media. I mean, kids are 11 years old on social media these days, 10 years yeah. old. And I feel like it's this taunting spirit, like Goliath, who was just taunting. And the armies were afraid. I mean, they were just crumbling in fear and doing whatever this giant was saying. He was taunting. He was mocking God. He was mocking. And David rose up and was like, no, who are you to defy yeah. my God? And so I just feel like we need to be intentional to give our kids those stones. Like without that, they're coming against some massive giants within culture that yeah. they need to be prepared for. Yeah, I think that um, there's, there's, there's a spiritual component to this that is so... You, we have to understand, like as parents, as Christians, as believers, like, I mean, the enemy wants to take out the next generation. Yeah. Like there is a call and a mandate on Gen Z yeah. to do incredible things. Mm -hmm. And 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 the, that's why the resistance against them is so intense. I mean, the, 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 we, we see it all over America, you know, at the altar calls. We see kids, you know, confused by their gender and being 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 coaxed into that confusion, you know, and we see I'm not just in the world, in the church. I mean, this is crazy. Like, you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And I mean, yeah, we were I 
you know, spent the majority of my education in a private Christian school, which we all know those are not perfect and, and mine wasn't, but it was, I mean, these battles that our kids are fighting, they're not the same ones that we fought. No, definitely not. Definitely not. And I think that, I mean, this year we decided to send our kids back to school. Mm -hmm. um, we felt like it was going to be... Why did we do that? Um, <laughs> for many reasons. <laughs> I think that it's just a beautiful combination of just seasons, right? Yeah. There's seasons for everything, yeah. and I felt like our kids were really desperate for some stability. And I did have a rule, though. I said if, if our school mandates the wearing of masks, we're, it's over. And they didn't, so yes, thus far. Yeah. I was but go ahead. Um, and so we, we have an incredible Christian school in our in where we live. And the um, the fact that our kids can learn everything through a biblical view and a, the lens of theology of mm -hmm. and, and that God is part of everything, that we don't have like education and then God, and we don't have yeah. government and God. Like right. the fact that there's been these crazy lines that have been drawn, um, I just love that we get to send our kids to this beautiful Christian school. But um, we also know that not everybody has that opportunity. Yeah. And so we kind of just wanted to talk about, I don't know, just give some pointers and like what we feel if you, if you have your kids in a public school, if you're homeschooling, if you're going right. to Christian school, um, we kind of just wanted to talk about each of those. Yeah, I think, I think that what's difficult is not everybody has the option that we right. have. Not everybody has yeah. the resources, not everybody has the ability. And so what you have a lot of times, and I get these comments a lot online, is parents that have their kids in public school. I have public school teachers that I know, mm -hmm. pe really great people that they, they feel called to the area of public education, mm -hmm. right? They're called to be a light. They're called to bring uh, the presence of God. They're called, and, and I love that. And we need more of those right. for sure. We need tons of them. But I think my heart would be to share, you know, and, and my wife as well, is that, you know, I don't know it's a one size fits all. I think a lot of times it just depends on the situation and, and, and that also believing that there's grace. Like, I do feel like, and we're just seeing the beginnings of the homeschool boom, right? Yeah. I mean, it is like crazy. I was looking at the graph the yeah, other day. It's, wild. it's like the amount of people homeschooling has gone through the roof. And listen, the government hates it because yeah. they cannot control the minds of our kids. And yet I love it. Yeah. I think this is amazing. I think there's a whole revolution around homeschooling. And I think that I want to encourage those of you that feel like you don't have an option. That is an option. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we can do it in the craziness of our life, I know that you guys can do it as well. Yeah. But why don't you keep talking about like. I feel like um, specifically and like what we had learned even when you were running for Congress, like it's so important to find out what you guys, what your children are being taught. You just assume like that nothing evil is being taught because yeah. they have the best interest for you. It is not the fact. So it's not that our kids, I mean, our kids were resilient. Like God decided for each child that's, that's here that this is the time that they're supposed to be here. He created them with yeah. the, enough strength to go up against any type of bogus stuff that they're learning. So we don't have to have a spirit of fear. Yeah. I think it's a huge deal. Right. Um, but you go to your schools, find out what right. they're being taught, ask questions. I know in the state of California, you can't even go to the school to find out. You have to go see some type of superintendent in some building. I mean, they make it hard. Yeah. But go do those things. Right. Take those steps. Find out what your kids are being taught. I mean, I know for me, when I asked my son, so what what did you learn at school? And he's like, recess was fun. Snack was fun. I have no idea what he's being taught. That's what I, that's the information that's being relayed to me. Mm -hmm. But I know there's a lot of information going into his brain and implanting a worldview, implanting a view mm -hmm. about God, implanting a view, a, about a view about politics. I mean, we're seeing videos going viral where teachers oh, are there was ranting. One, there was one yesterday yeah. that was crazy of yeah. this, and I'm sure a lot of you guys saw it, but... The, the woman in Utah, and thank God there was a kid there that yeah. started videotaping it. And I think more kids are going to start doing that. Yeah, but because, I mean, and we're going to see the craziness of what's being taught. But she just started railing against Trump, against people that don't parents. believe in climate change. About parents. Your parents oh, about are parents. stupid. <laughs> yeah, telling the kids in class, your parents are stupid. Yeah. You know way also, more than your parents. if you don't believe what I believe, get out of my room. I mean, and I just, I actually don't think that's uncommon. Yeah. I think that 
people feel like they have the control of these children in their room and their environment and they want to they want to give as much direction to these children but the sad thing is their direction might not be going the direction you want so i think you know if you have your children in a public school ask questions read curriculum right it's not as simple as it was in the 90s you yeah. know like yeah. even with sex ed it's not what you learned when you were in public school in the 90s. Yeah. It is. Um, it's it's insane. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's, but you wouldn't know unless you ask. Yeah. And you can see that curriculum. And, and I think that there's a whole movement and, and hopefully even this pours fire on that movement of you know going to your school boards, going to their meeting, yeah. pushing against critical race theory. Be like all of this stuff that's happening right now, like parents right. are rising up. Yeah. Like, and I know that the media tries to portray it as these fear mongering, Fox News watching, you know, fringe right people. But no, I, yeah. <laughs> I have friends all over America that, are, that feel called to be more engaged now than ever before. Yeah. And I wanna encourage you guys, this is the right move. This yeah. is what we gotta do. We gotta yeah. engage. We got to go to these school boards. We got to find out what's being taught. And when we, you know, I was telling my wife, like, what I think makes me feel so uh, frustrated and is very alarming to me is right now, critical race theory, you know, the biggest people pushing back against it are governors of like Texas and Florida, right? Like, DeSantis and Abbott are pushing against banning critical race theory because it's racist, right? They're banning this being taught in schools, and yet so many faith leaders are not talking about it. Right. So many educators are not talking about it because, because, they, because they've been teaching it. Because the spirit of intimidation. <laughs> because of that. Yeah. And so there is a boldness, this hold the line theme, there's a boldness that's rising up in the parents across America. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you, man, keep going for it. You are yeah. fighting for the lives of the next generation, and we need you to keep doing it. So anyway. Don't be silenced even with your children by the spirit of intimidation. I know some people we've been talking and they don't even, they're like, well, I don't want to really have that conversation with my kids because what if I say the wrong thing? And then they go to school and they say the wrong, I'm like, no, like you can't just be silent about these really big issues. Yeah. And I think really what it comes down to is people don't have good theology. Yeah. Like they do not know biblical doctrine. Yeah. Because when you read the Bible, <laughs> it's pretty clear about all the things. You know, and I feel like we've grown up in a time where it's got so ushy gushy soft. soft. And when you read the scriptures, it's not soft. Like God is loving, but he is also, it says we need a fear of God. Right. <laughs> like yeah. what? Actually, I was just talking to Katura about that. She was like, what does this mean? I need to be fearful of God. I'm like, no. And it was just this beautiful conversation that we had. And actually, it makes me think about this book that I had found. Um it, it teaches biblical doctrine to your children. And I, I just realized, like, when I was reading this to my kids, it's called Theology. <laughs> I don't even know these the writers, so I'm, this isn't. But it is so incredible because it's starting conversations with me and my kids about sin, about God, about Holy Spirit, about what it means when God makes a promise, but also what does it mean when when people sin and how it, it actually separates us not only from God, but from people. And right. anyways, it goes on and on and on. And I just think, man, this is so important. And, and I mean, I'm going to be, I'm going to have an honest moment right now. I was reading the book to our kids and what our young, our third was like, what's hell? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, I know he's probably heard things, but the fact that like I had never been intentional with my son, my third, which is probably because of the busyness and crazy, you just assume. I just, I think I just yeah. assume like all my kids know doctrine. They know, yeah. they know all about it. They go to Sunday school. They go to Sunday school. They right. are raised in worship meetings and right. we read Bible stories. We read the Bible to them. And I just realized like how incredibly important it is for them to know doctrine, like yeah. biblical doctrine, because they won't be swayed. They yeah. will not be turned by whatever they hear from a teacher or read in the textbook. If they know this is what the word of God says and the word of God is truth. Yeah. There's no questioning it. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the uh, amount of biblical uh, illiteracy yeah. that is happening ac across America, I mean, it's it's really the people that are getting hurt the most from this are children. Yeah. 
and uh, you know, I remember being in like Roar, Roar Rangers. <laughs> I grew up in Assemblies of God Church, and you had to memorize. You know, they taught you, you know, taught you how to start fires, and you get badges and all this stuff. But you also had to memorize like tons of verses. Yeah. And um, there's something about that we have to recapture yeah. in this generation that goes to church once a once a month on average. Is, is a love for the Word of God and how that is really the foundation, I would say, of our family. I mean, we, you know, we have a couple different Bibles. We, we read the Action Bible. The boys love it with the, you know, scenes of people fighting in it. Katura, our daughter, not so much. She's kind of like, eh, Action Bible. She, so we use the Adventure Bible for her. I don't know. We have a couple different options. Yeah. And so there's a lot of resources out there, actually way more than when we grew up. But I want to encourage you guys, that's the foundation. That's where it has to begin is at the home with a biblical worldview. And even if your kids are doing Christian school or public yeah. school or whatever, it's, it, that is still not a substitute. Right. No. The days of Sunday school teaching our kids is over. Yeah. It's just not enough. Yeah. And it doesn't. I mean, we're watching it, I think, play out with millennials. Yeah. We're watching people start believing things that are completely not true. And they're taking it as truth because they don't know, they just, they don't know the Bible. Yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. And it, and it really is. And I think, uh, you know, one of the things as is, even as we're talking about the spiritual perspective, like, like we have to understand, I mean, things, as soon as they took prayer out of schools, yeah. you know, that was kind of the beginning. Not only was that correlated to the rise of school shootings, which is really true. Like if you look at that, at that correlation, when they started taking prayer to schools, it was like this, this covering, this, this thing that was there, you know, meet around the flagpole and pray. Like all that stuff was happening in America, even in public schools. Yeah. And, and now with that gone, there's like an entire layer of, I'm talking spiritually now, of like protection and guidance and whatever that's kind of been removed. And we're living in the that's after right, effects. Right, after effects of it, totally. So Amazing. for all of the parents out there um, that are watching, by the way, I want to do more of these because I, I think that there's, I know, you know, there's one of the biggest requests we get, you know, as a family is how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? And we are not perfect. We are so far from perfect yeah. and we're figuring it out. All of our kids have wildly different personalities yeah. that need a lot of different things, mm -hmm. you know, um, as they grow up, as we nurture them. So babe, what are some tips that you would give people or maybe keys as they face this? It can seem so daunting, right? right? Because we're seeing you know, we're seeing the, the exposing of this thing in education, right? That's right. trying to push transgenderism, that's trying to push confusion on our kids, that's trying to push, you know, I mean, it's, it's insane. Like the critical race theory dynamic, like well, all of these. home is not safe. Your parents aren't Oh yeah, safe. that your, your home is not safe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had a friend who's a public school teacher and he was given a form that he was supposed to give to his fifth grade students, fifth graders. My daughter's in fifth grade. And it said, you had to fill out this thing. And he, he had to preface it with, your parents won't know what this paper says. Only us at school will know. Like, it's safe. And the fact that that's being even talked about. And then in the paper, they had to say what gender they want to be referred to at school. What gender are they emotionally attracted to? What gender are they physically or sexually attracted to? Like, why would a school need to know this information? Yeah. Like this has, n it has none of their business. So the fact that they're framing this like school is safe and parents aren't, Yeah. you know, we know the truth. Your parents probably don't, you right. know? And again, there's amazing public school teachers out there that I'm sure are not speaking this, but right. I think I just want, I think it'd be amazing if you just went after like people having fear of their kids. Yeah. I mean, my, I mean, and that's the thing. I think that there's, you know, this dynamic, like we, we have to have confidence, right? That yeah. the Lord's put us as parents in this season. He's equipped us. He's called us. Right. He's given us the tools and he's, and this is even part of our heart is just trying to share a few things that we've learned along the way. Again, we're far from perfect and we're still figuring it out. But I do feel like, you know, that he's, letting us that the Lord is giving us audibles, you know, like last season we were supposed to, you know, do homeschooling. Right. That was evident, right? right? This season we're supposed to do, 
you know, we're, they're supposed to go back to school, to private school. I don't know how long this is going to last, and I don't know that there is necessarily a formula, especially when you break it For down to... For each kid, right. To each kid, you know? Um, I got friends that their kids, they have, you know, three or four kids, and they all go to different schools mm-hmm. based upon... So now that to me sounds insane. I don't even want to try to coordinate that. But I feel like that the Holy Spirit, he's our guide and he's giving us wisdom. The big thing that I want to really come against is the spirit of fear and intimidation that comes against parents, you know, and you know, there are parents that they, they, they move in reaction because they're afraid that they might da, 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 da. And they, and so they, they have a massive spirit of fear in the decisions they make. And, mm-hmm. and that affects the children. It, it really affects does. the children. And the reality is, is, you know, we, we, we're, you know, God has given us, given each of us 18 years to steward our kids. Right. right. And then it's just like high five, take the world. And so we have a limited amount of time to imprint the things God's given us. And even when you're talking about teenagers, I mean, it's even a limited, I don't know, how many years would you say it is? I mean, I know that we only have seven years left with our daughter and that blows my mind, like at home, you know, like that's, it's, it, it puts a fear of God in me to be intentional. And, and so at some point, like they have to, they're going to be you're going to be imparting to them and imprinting them enough of who God is and this worldview that they're going to really take on the world. Right. But everything that we can do to help them, like everything that we can do, and and this is even an encouragement, uh, you know, convicting to me, you know, because I have a very busy life. I have so many organizations, so much stuff going on. And I just felt the Lord say last night, like, Sean, you, this stuff you think matters, but right. right now you need to read the Bible to your kids. Yeah. You know, like this investment that you're, that you're pouring into is going to pay dividends well beyond this project you're working on or this email you send out or this, whatever. Like I have friends that have come to me before their kids are in high school or, or, or kind of fell away young from adults, the Lord, right. young adults. And they're just like, man, the one thing I wish, I wish I read the Bible to my kids more. I wish, I wish that. And so I don't want, you guys to live, to listen to this and live with regrets or whatever. I, I want this to be an action moment, you know, where we step it up as parents Mm -hmm. and do more, you know, to know what our kids are being taught, do more to push against this wave and this tide that's trying to indoctrinate their future with ungodly, unbiblical, demonic perspectives. Have conversations. Yes. I mean, think about how many hours we're in the car with our children. And sometimes I'm like, can you just put a movie on and just, let's just not talk. (laughs) But I'm like, how amazing is that I have this opportunity to have your ears. Right. You know? And so just being intentional, I think is like a huge thing that we really feel conviction about with even our own kids, like intentional to teach them. And um, I think another thing that we really just want to, emphasize is ignorance is not bliss right right be educated know what kids know what culture is saying know what your kids are being taught know what they're seeing on their social media be intentional about monitoring their social media um i mean i yeah that's a whole i I think i think also you know a huge key for us has been getting your kids in church yeah getting your kids in youth group getting your kids connected i know when i was growing up in high school, like my youth pastor, I mean, really helped save my life, you know, because he reached out to me and was intentional. I was sitting on the last row uh, of, of the chairs in youth group, you know, just because my parents made me go. And he reached out to me and the Lord began to grab a hold of my heart. And, you know, if my parents weren't intentional and they didn't give me a choice, like the 90s, like you don't get choices. Right. Like this whole choice thing people do now, you can have this or this. That's not how I grew up. I grew up like you are going. Like if you live here and you want to eat, you're going. That's the end of the story. And we got to resco- rediscover a little bit more of that grit. Yeah. I mean, if you can hear me, a little bit of the 90s grit. It's not bad, guys. Like, we need a little bit more of that, especially dealing with the cultural, well, you know, Because there's so intensity. many choices. The choices are endless. Right. And they will lead to an end. They will lead to destruction. They will lead to destruction. And yeah. we've watched it happen. Yeah. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. And so, you know... Um, 
but uh, get your kids in proximity. I can't tell you guys how many stories we've had over the last year parents bringing their kids to let us worship, yeah. right? The kids are like, they don't want to go. They think it's lame. They're like, what are we doing with these outdoor fanatic people? But they get in the proximity of worship, man, and the Holy Spirit gets their heart. And yeah. so there's something about the proximity of getting your kids into community, mm -hmm. getting your kids in a worship thing, get, having friends over, doing a, a small worship time at your home, just talking about God, like whatever you can and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of not being cool, right? Like <laughs> shove that Bible down their throat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the days of trying to be culturally yeah. relevant yeah, and trying yeah, to be yeah, cool, yeah. like those are long gone. Yeah. Like we have to resist, we have to swim against the stream. And, you know, I, I also think that, you know, we have to monitor too. I mean, the, the, the things are getting crazier with the vaccine mandates and the, you know, and the, and the masks and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I, for me, like there are, there are lines that I have drawn in the sand, you know, that I will not cross when it goes to that. And I just trust the Lord with those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Be intentional about your line. Be intentional. <laughs> Ask God, you know, like what your family's called to Yeah. for each season. There's no apps like with, for us, for our seasons and the way that we've done things with our kids and traveled a lot and then not traveled a lot. And all the different things we just really view it as like seasons and yeah. to just really be open to what god is calling our family to in that season and so that helps just set a tone for your family i think it's been really powerful for for yeah. me i never get hopeless or feel like we're doing too much or that they aren't getting to this because it's like oh this is a season this is what god's called us these are the lines these are the boundary lines yeah. right um so, yeah, I mean, we're about to hit whiplash where yeah. they were running all over America with me over the last right. year. And now we are dialed, man. We're locked into school. We're locked into a system, Soccer which I actually don't piano. hate. Soccer, piano, yeah. basketball, you know, dance, whatever, mm -hmm. everything, all the things. And we have a heart. We want our kids. Why don't you share that before we end? Like how you want your you wanted our kids to be able to experience all that. Yeah. Because growing up, maybe you didn't get the chance to. Experience traveling? No, like doing all the things. Oh, yeah. I definitely, I think that it's just so important for kids to have just to be able to have room to explore what's in their heart and their desires and the talents that God's given them. And so I just feel like it's really important for them to have seasons where they can go to soccer and do dance and learn piano and right. also be able to go on a trip and go to Washington, D.C. and pray over America. And so it's not one or the other. I really yeah. feel like um, last year was way more travel than, <laughs> than normal for us, but I feel like there can be like a beautiful mixture yeah. um, where we can bring them in on what God's doing right. and, and we can do as family, but then they also have their lives and they can to be themselves, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and have the room for that. And so that's really important for me, yeah. um, for our children to experience to be able to experience that. Yeah, yeah we're, we'll do a whole nother podcast at some point on family and ministry because that's something that I think is, is we're really, really passionate about. But um, why don't you pray just over the education thing, over people out there before we end, yeah. release your wisdom. Oh my goodness. Okay, Lord, we just thank you so much um, that you have trusted us with beautiful humans to nurture and to create a home and a family. And um, God, I just pray against the spirit of fear that might be tormenting people that um, parents that are watching, you know, just everything that's new and the, the, the spirit of intimidation, the culture and um, the just learning how to fight against culture, but also just learning how to fight in the place of peace and love and knowing what is truth. And um, Lord, I just pray that you will just give each person that's listening just wisdom mm -hmm. on how to raise their children and their families and how to create a space that is safe for their kids to have conversations. Um, and we just pray, Lord, that you 
will make a way where there seems to be no way. I know there's a lot of parents that are just in tough spots right now. So God, I just pray that you will bring resources, that you'll bring community, that you will just reveal what you're doing in these days and that you are moving and you have decided and had destiny for each child that is here. This is not too scary of a time to be alive. Yeah. Um, God, we just thank you for these mighty warrior children that you have decided now is the time for them to be living. And so, God, I pray that you will just give us um, those stones that you will teach us how to equip our children to stand for what is right and stand for biblical values and stand for biblical doctrine. <laughs> I just pray peace and love and joy over every single person listening. Yeah, Lord, and we just thank you for all of the educators, God, that are out yeah. there, Lord, the Holy Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, Bible-loving uh, uh, believers, Lord, that are in the public education sphere, that are in private education, that are doing helping with homeschool curriculums. Lord, we just pray for wisdom, yeah. God. Give them wisdom to continue to create resources to combat this, this agenda from the pit of hell that wants to... Uh, that wants to uh, take the minds of the next generation. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would raise them up, God. I pray that in the coming season, Lord, that the church would be a force, Lord, that we would be the leaders in education around the world, God, that you would give us yeah. the tools and the wisdom, God, to defeat the lies of the enemy. Um, Lord, I pray for, for those parents out there. Just give them boldness and courage, God. Lord, that you've equipped them, you've called them for such a time as this, they're here and they are gonna raise up world changers, God. Lord, that they're gonna raise up world changers. So we just release that. We just say, hold the line, stay strong. We love you, we're with you. Sean and Kate here, we'll do this again. My wife's the best ever. And I pray that this blessed you guys immensely.